Salute, led by Chris Calabresi. Right hand over your heart. Salute, led. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, we are back to school, and I am so excited. I want to just, before we get into the agendas, recognize all of you for what you've done to help our back-to-school efforts. Um, things have been going really well, so I want to give the principals a round of applause and staff. Thank you so much. Your efforts and commitment does not go unnoticed by the board here, so we wanted to make sure we recognize you this this evening, not this afternoon anymore. All right, so we've done the flag salute and the agenda review. Do any of the board members have any edits or things? Okay, perfect. Um, so the next we will move on to Dr. Eaton with the special presentation or the superintendent. Yeah. Thank you Report. and welcome everybody. It's nice to see everybody and welcome back. I just wanted to show a few pictures from some of the things that have taken place over the last uh, couple of months. First of all, we had a great professional development day back on uh, July 26 and uh, just lots of things going on and lots of uh, teachers and staff in trying to get our year uh, kicked off. I, I also want to uh, remind the board of see how big our TK team is growing as we go forward, right? So um, we're now serving most four-year-olds. Next year, um, we'll be serving it as, as a full grade, right, in accordance with law. So this is this is coming forward as well. So um, really excited to see more students and more staff there. I want to thank the Neighborhood Church, who's been a longtime partner out there at Edna Hill Middle School. They continue to uh, support the school and, and donate supplies every year. So I really want to thank them for that partnership. Um, and then we, this was even before school started, uh, s several of our TK and kindergarten classrooms, and, and this is even a first grade classroom at Marsh Creek, have started doing uh, back to school night before school begins to get off to a good start with uh, parents. So this is at Marsh Creek Elementary. Um, and then our traditional sneak a peek for our younger students. This is uh, transitional kindergarten and kindergarten at uh, Brentwood Elementary. So that the first day uh, that those students are coming to school, they've already had a chance to meet their teacher and come in and it, we just get off to a smoother start. So I really appreciate all the effort it takes from the teachers and the principals in getting those rooms ready to go even before the school year kicks off. So thanks to everybody for that. Um, and then this is also what it looked like at Marsh Creek up through first grade. And uh, this is Mary Casey Black. Also something else the librarians did this year, which I thought was great, is as they were going through um, some of their racks in the library, they put out free books for families to take. And so, especially around uh, the beginning of the school year, you saw lots of free boxes out there for families to come and grab a book. And so I thought that was great. And then the first day of school. So you can see uh, their Cray and actually Dr. Cray was out there to welcome students. Uh, Loma Vista out there getting started and then uh, Bristow. So lots of excitement going on in the first day of school. This was also Harvest Grove um, and the meet and greet that took place out in Veterans Park. And so getting to know those families who have a less traditional um, school experience. So great for that. I also want to thank the school board for a continuing Continuing that tradition of hand delivering a cake to each of the school staffs. I think uh, by the time I got to some of the schools, it was three quarters gone at 11 in the morning. So people love cake. So thank you for doing that. Um, and then uh, and then more traditional backs to school nights that continued into the into the school year as well and went. I love this picture uh, from uh, Mrs. Munoz's class in TK um, as they're going around and learning about their class. And, and uh, it's just a great, Maria, did you take that picture? Yeah, yeah nice work, nice work. So anyway, great picture. Um, another great partner that we've had for many, many years is the Mothers of Brentwood who provide backpacks and school supplies for some of our students that come to school without. And so um, each year you can see some of the backpacks that are being held up, they're, they're full to the brim and then we distribute them amongst the schools and have them here and so our full administrative team met and took pictures with them and just thanked them for their generosity uh, coming in so again a big thank you to them 
um, some great things that are going on across the district to make students feel connected to school as they kick off. So this is the week of welcome at, at Adams. Um, and you can see some team building activities and some picture taking opportunities and some uh, bracelet uh, uh, students could redeem those bracelets that they won in rock, paper, scissors, and other competitions for uh, popsicles. So uh, popsicle sounds really good right about now, uh, today. And then uh, lots of uh, parent activities that are being in, engaged as well. So here's the back to school picnic at Marsh Creek. Uh, going on. Here's the Edna Hill uh, Middle School Leadership Students uh, building community and getting ready to kick off the year and be leaders throughout their campus. I also really like this picture. So this is Mr. Swenson, a fourth grade teacher who was directing morning traffic. Uh, always at the beginning of the year, getting into the traffic flow is an important thing. So uh, it's a great outfit. And then uh, some recruitment here for students to get uh, parents involved in their schools. So I really want to take a second to recognize all of our PTA and Parents Club members across the district that really make us better by their partnerships with the schools. And so thank them for that. And then uh, here's uh, the Principals 200 Club, which is uh, something that Mr. Casey is doing out at Ron Nunn to honor students who are demonstrating cooperation and participation and respect. So here was uh, a winner of that club member. I also want to thank uh, three members who served a long time on our Citizens uh, Oversight Committee for Measure B. So Carolina Villaseca and Ryan Cameron and Dante Ross, um, who all came to many meetings um, out of the limelight just to help to make sure that we were uh, we were following the rules and 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 supporting their community oversight. And so I want to thank them as they've termed out now and are moving forward. Um, and then we've also kicked off our community celebrations. So this is Mrs. Blanche and Ron Nunn kicking off the What is the Family lesson for, for kindergarten. I want to thank them for kicking this off. One of the really fun things walking around is uh, seeing the, the growth of the Building Thinking Classrooms activities that are taking place um, in both our upper elementary and middle school. So this is Ms. Rodriguez's math class at Bristow, um, dealing with the problem of why do hot dogs come in packs of eight, why buns come in packs of 12, and what's the most effective way to go shopping and so I'm still waiting for the answer from them so looking forward to that as it comes forward and then it was nice to see you here uh, Lisa so uh, I was in Mrs. Bustios's class and her sixth graders were measuring and calculating the area of Bristow school buildings to calculate the whole which was really cool and I just said we could have used them earlier and saved a lot of architectural fees and then we continue to have our school resources officers so his officer Sanchez and officer Bollinger um, out there meeting with our, our TK kids out at uh, Brentwood Elementary. Um, and then finally, I wanted to take a second. Um, you know, last year, we shared the tragedy of losing Ceci Martinez, who was a beloved uh, teacher out at uh, Mary Casey Black. And um, Mrs. Gonzalez sent this out to the community. She's been working with a team at her school this week. And I just wanted to make sure that you saw it board. Um, and really the desire of that school to create a lasting tribute to her. Um, so one of the things that they're doing is they're creating a special bench with a plaque to be placed out in front of a tree or under a tree in front of her room where she was uh, for kids. They also have an annual kickball game that they're gonna dedicate to her. If you knew Ceci, she loved soccer. She was a, a big um, proponent of athletics across. And so dedicating to her is, is, a, is a real tribute to what she loved and what she wanted her students to do. And then they are gonna continue to wear pink on, on Martinez Mondays going forward um, just to, just to celebrate her fight against breast cancer. So I wanted to share that with you and, and that staff has not forgotten her and continuing to honor her. And that's my report. All right. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. Um, next, any board member comments or committee report outs? Not at this time. All right, moving on now, I will um, Move on to item number seven, which is the public comment portion of the agenda. And at this time, the public is permitted to address the school board on items that are on the consent calendar, request for future agenda items, and items that are not on the agenda. Remarks are limited to three minutes per person. And while we encourage your comments, unfortunately, state law prevents us from discussing items that are not on our meeting agenda. Public comments can be made at this time or during the appropriate agenda item. Please know that we do take them very seriously. And if appropriate, staff will follow up. 
Um, I'll make a motion that we open public comment. I'll second. Thank you. Thank you. I do have one yellow card. If you have another yellow card, anyone, please bring it on up. But now I will um, call Matthew. Oh, I need a vote. Sorry. Uh, first and second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Um, motion carries. So public comments are open, and I will um, call Matthew Taylor to the podium. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here uh, and giving me this opportunity. Uh, my name is Matthew Taylor. I teach economics at Los Badanos and at Cal State East Bay. Uh, I also live here in, in Brentwood and I am a father of four. Uh, I'm addressing you today because my daughter misses the cutoff for TK by a few hours. And we have not been able to find a place for her to uh, go to get preschool this coming year. Um, and so my family is facing this kind of heartbreaking reality that while she is incredibly ready for this really bright girl um, uh, and dying for all the social interaction, uh, she really might not end up with preschool this year. Uh, and so uh, we inquired with our local elementary school at Cray and uh, they informed me that there's excess capacity there, there is space for her, uh, and that the uh, we would need approval from the, the district uh, for her to enroll and be admitted. Uh, and so I, as a, as a father, uh, the idea that she doesn't get to go to preschool, we might, be, might not be able to make that happen for her is uh, a tough reality to face. My guess is that there are other folks and other children in the community that are in similar situations. I don't know how widespread the idea, the issue of ex excess capacity in the TK program is, um, but uh, really what I wanted to bring up to the board and advocate for was that she be allowed to enroll in, in the TK program at Cray. Uh, and more broadly, more generally, uh, if there is excess capacity in the TK program to, re to revisit the, uh, the district's policy for admitting students that are born after the cutoff that was mandated by the state. Um, from my layperson's reading of uh, educational code, it definitely seems that, that it's up to the board and up to the district to make this decision on a case-by-case -case basis um, based upon your policy. So uh, I know we can't have a conversation about it. I don't know what the best path forward is if it's to ask that this get put on a future uh, agenda item for the next, next month's meeting. Um, uh, I don't know what that formal process is. Uh, I also wasn't able to find a, an actual policy, an explicit policy or decision about admitting students into the TK program and birth date. Um, so I'm not, I might, I might have missed it. Um, uh, but some guidance on that uh, for one, uh, but also a request to bring up the, to, to address this issue and this policy uh, next month on a future, future agenda. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Any other public comments? If not, I move that we close the public comments. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion carries. Public comments are now closed. Moving on to item number eight, consent items. Can I get a motion? If nobody has anything to pull, I move that we approve consent items 8.0 through 8.11. And I will second it. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Moving on to item number nine, hearings and appeals. There were none. So we'll move on to item number 10, uh, report out of closed session. There are no report outs from closed session. So we will move on to item number 10.1, which is our enrollment update. First, hold on, please. All right, well, good evening, everyone. You can hear me. Well, I you have in front of you this same um, slideshow, but I wanted to just give you an update on our enrollment. Um, when we met last time, um, no, this is not progressing. 
Uh, we talked about how last school year we had um, gained 523 kids throughout the school year. And we ended the year at 9,641 kids. Currently, as of this afternoon, we have 9,721 kids. So we are continuing to grow. And uh, we, over this last 12 days, or the, the first 12 days of school offices were open, we gained 202 kids. That is, those are unprecedented numbers. The people behind me, can tell you that was wild times in their offices, but they handled it beautifully as they always do. So this time last year, there were only 113 kids that enrolled. So this was really a big change from last year. So when we met, we talked about how there was really, um, there were really tight numbers in fourth grade and sixth grade at that time. And then it also became pretty tight in third grade. So we opened a third grade at Ron Nunn, a fourth grade at Cray, and a sixth grade at Bristow. So thank you so much to Nick and to Brian and to Anna for being so gracious about opening those, those classrooms and welcoming kids. And also to all of the departments for being so supportive of that because it was definitely a group project to get everything going before school started. So, but those kids are here. And so there's always some drops those first few days of school as we talked about. And um, we did drop about 85 students during those, those first few days. So currently our overall gain is 139 students as of today, but that's still quite a few kids. So that's where we are right now. And um, that's our enrollment report for today. Do you guys have any questions? No questions from the board. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you, Chris. Thank you to the principals that are making it happen with the large classes and new students. Appreciate that. All right, moving on to item number 10.2, summer programs update. Good evening, Board of Education. <laughs> I pop on there. Um, I'm, in, I'm here to provide you with a report of some of our summer programs that happened during um, the months of uh, June and July. And so I'm just going to get started here. So this year we were fortunate enough to have three distinct programs operating at our schools during summertime. Um, and I'll, I'll just go down and kind of talk about each of these. We, we had our typical extended year uh, ESY program for students as identified in their IEPs. This was available to students in TK through 8 and was held at Brentwood L from June 13th to July 12th. Monday through Friday, four hours a day. We had um, 200 plus students, 24 teachers, and approximately 100 support staff. As you um, know, these are students of most need, and so they often come with one-on-one -on -one aides and others. We also um, were able to continue our extended learning uh, program or ELOP, the program that we've been running um, during each intercession as well as after school. Uh, that um, was held at Marsh Creek and was available to students in TK through 6, which is um, the primary focus of the ELOP funds. It was conducted um, through uh, the later half of June, first half of July, Monday through Friday for a full day, 8.30 to 5.30. Students could leave early, but that, that was the open hours. And this program is um, based on um, uh, the work we're doing with Right at School, and they have a disguised learning program, which is basically making academic learning fun. They had 180 plus students, 26 staff members uh, staffed by Right at School. And then the last program that we were able to offer this summer was our Summer Academy, which was offered to students who, are, who were below grade level in math in grades two through five at Ron Nunn for um, a few weeks there from nine to 12. The focus was on number sense and we had 300 plus students with 13 teachers and seven aides. I wanna acknowledge, cause I skipped up at the top that um, we had some great administrators helping us at each of the three sites. 
Matthew Jensen, Mark Turner, and Haley Young, and a couple of um, fantastic secretaries in Blanca Mathias and Susie Bach. So just, um, I think some of this was on the previous slide, but just to, to um, highlight, for Summer Academy, these were students were, um, our focus was math, and so we pulled from the lowest scoring students on IXL. Um, sometimes parents declined, so we keep moving up that, that row of students who needed support. For ESY, it was students identified as eligible for extended year service as per their IEP, and then ELOP was the students who were already participating um, throughout the year. A couple of, a few highlights of our programs. We were um, able to provide lunch to um, all students involved as well as transportation to many of the students so that was that was a big plus um, we had stu for the summer academy students they were very engaged in uh, in some hands-on math that we had focused on that number sense we had small class sizes and the ESY students were able to participate in a water play day and participate and um, engage in the use of integrated technology throughout their day. Um, I won't read all of this, but um, the team that did all this work over the summer had a lot of thank yous for a lot of people to make sure this happens. And I just want to recognize um, all of those people listed there as super helpful for, for our summer programs. And a few more. Any questions? No, before we get to questions, we want to echo those thank yous to the administrators and staff that really helped to put that summer program together. Thank you. All right, questions? Any plans for middle school at, at any point? Yeah, um, we have not finalized our um, offerings for this upcoming intercession and then spring intercession then next summer. It's definitely something that's on the table. Perfect, thank you. Great question. Can I, let me just, <laughs> I just add one thing to that is one of the, one of the sources that we're getting funds and will probably continue to be a source of funds going forward is, as Michael said, was the ELOP program, mm -hmm. which only goes up through sixth grade. So it creates sort of this weird piece for us in middle school, right? Where it's really only the sixth grade programs that are eligible for that funding. So it will require some creativity if we continue to support that. I was actually forward. thinking more like the math program and yeah. stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, thank you. All right, moving on to item 10.3, uh, BUSD board priority goal update, attendance. Kristen Job Show continues. <laughs> She's back. Michael has a hard time letting go of the, of the stage sometimes. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to have our very first presentation about our board priority goals, which we're very excited about. So as you know, these are our goals that we'll be sharing about all year long. And so we'll be coming to you to discuss, whenever my mouse works, um, the different goals that are our priority. The first one for this month is going to be around attendance, which is why our trophies are here, our attendance trophies. So our main focus area of attendance is to improve student attendance across our district. And how we're going to do that is through communicating and the importance of regular attendance, reducing chronic absenteeism, and providing a tiered support to families. So the importance of attendance, it's such a powerful predictor of student outcomes. It's even more important than how a student will perform on any kind of testing um, for the um, academic testing um, of how they'll do, if they'll drop out of school or not, if they will actually attend school. So of course, when a child is ill, we don't expect them to come to school, but we wanna make sure that we inform 
families about when it is safe to come to school because we're talking about missing school for vacation or sleeping in or just missing the bus or not feeling like it. We want to make sure that we are very clear about when it is safe to come to school and we, we, that we really want them to attend because how critical it is for their development. So this is some past attendance data. Um, some years in the past, the past five years or so, or five years ago, we were about, our, t our attendance for our district was always really hovered at about 96%. And we were very comfortable in that. And then of course the pandemic hit and then it dropped as you can see there. So we then were held harmless with our attendance rate, but our children were not attending obviously, and they were all on Zoom. And then they started to come back, but slowly you could see the a little bit of a rise and then a dip. And so the we've gotten um, this last year, we're at about 93% attendance, and we really want that to improve obviously. So our goal this year is to improve that by about 1%. And then, then to continue to improve it every year at about 1%. So the reasons that our children that have been missing school, when we look back at our historical data this last year, year and a half, is that it's primarily um, excused absences. It's primarily illness. So they are, we need to just really educate on when it is safe to come to school. Um, because most of them are not, on, not taking just days off just to take them off. They really feel that they are not well. So the next area, which is a real strong focus, is the chronic absenteeism. This data is taken from our dashboard, our California dashboard. And the chronic absentee is if you have missed 10% of the days that you should be attending, then you're considered to have chronic absenteeism. So this is an area that we really need to focus on. The percentage there on the left, the 25.7%, is what our district data is from 21-22. And then I've also listed, you'll see this slide, the next slide is for the areas, the subgroups that are above that average. So African-American is 31.1%, and students with disabilities is 342 and foster use 53.1. And prior to COVID, our district was at 6% for chronic absenteeism. So it's an incredibly huge increase that we are working towards decreasing. And then, so this is our areas, this is our goals of what we'd like to accomplish for our goal for increasing attendance is to improve at least by a percentage point this year. And then for our LCAP goal to reduce chronic absenteeism at all school sites to reduce it from 25.7% to below 20%. And we think these are absolutely um, doable goals. I wanted to bring up the differentiated assistance. Michael presented on this at a previous board meeting. This is something that our district is considered in differentiated assistance because we have these three subgroups listed here that if you have the same student group that has been identified in a priority area in these two areas, then they are considered to be in differentiated assistance. So um, for these three areas, for our, these groups that I mentioned before, um, absenteeism is one of them. And then for African-American, it's also school climate, which is considered their su suspension rate. The same for foster youth and then students with disabilities, it's their achievement. So because our chronic absenteeism just sh shot right up, it threw all those other groups into the differentiated assistance. <laughs> So the action steps that we're taking, what are we doing about this? So at the site level, there is daily and weekly communication going out to families. They are on it. They are sharing with families, they're calling, you get those phone calls home. Um, they are communicating with families all the time. There's an action plan at each school to improve attendance. They're working very closely with their staff, with their families, um, in the office, making sure that they have a plan. There's incentives for increased attendance. I've seen already seen some things um, posted on the Twitter or the X or whatever you call it now um, to talk about how they're having their different incentives. And the school site, they have a school attendance review team, which is really a team coming together when you start to see these patterns of the chronic absenteeism to what kind of plan, what, what's happening? What can we do to get your child to come to school? What kind of supports are needed? And the district level, we're having an advertising blitz on the importance of why attendance is important. Um, clarifying with the families when a student 
should be at school and not be at school. Our nurse, Jackie Oria, is working on some videos and letters about why, when it's okay to come to school. District incentives, the trophies are back, as so proudly we brought them in here today. So we can't wait to give those out. Every month we'll be sharing those, um, our numbers and percentages, and we have very competitive principals behind me who can't wait to share those proudly at their schools. And then district-wide, we have a school attendance re review board, which we do meet with families. And we are the, um, Brentwood is the, with the um, district who does run the SARB for our area. And we do have those, for chronically absent students, we do meet and we have different supports for families, um, resources, and also consequences for, for families. And then how will we be measuring? Daily monitoring and outreach, the um, weekly school site reports, and at the district level, we have monthly admin meetings where we're going over how everyone is doing and sharing. And then both at site and district level, we are monitoring the attendance and tardies and the, the chronic absenteeism. And this, so I don't know if it's a little hard to see, maybe it's easier on your own computers, but what we have is we're gonna be sharing this data with our um, with our sites because that's how they're going to see when they win their trophies. But last year's data, how they, their year long data is in the left column. And then we ran the data from the first two weeks of school on the right side. And it's already looking really good if we just took it right now, because those kids are happy to be there the first two weeks of school. But you can see the district data, the district average for last year was 93.64. And currently, in a very short time, it's 97%. So it's increasing quite a bit already. So we'll take it. So we'll see how we, how we do, but we are really ramping things up. So we will continue to monitor this and collect it and report back in January. Are there any questions? Just real quick. <laughs> your, your slide five, is there any chance that we could put that in the offices of the school just so people can read that? I think it's pretty powerful myself. Yeah, when you see the history? Yeah, I mean, just nothing fancy or nothing. Just stick it up there. And even if we get two people to go, okay, you know. And is that on the website too? I mean, just, I mean, it's. We can add it. I mean, it's just something small, but. Sure. I'm done. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> no questions, but I'm really excited that there is this uh, intentionality around uh, wanting to increase our attendance um, with our students. And I agree, you know, one of those predictors of of things is, are you in class, right? And uh, you can't learn and teachers have a hard time teaching when your students are not there on a consistent basis. So I appreciate the effort of the district and the principals and all to um, try to make sure we have good attendance for our students, so thank you. Sure. I lied, what beds on your chart? Mm -hmm. Oh, I can guess. Is that the... Mm -hmm. I, I oh, no, just, it's in the, yeah, the one in yeah. black. This is, yeah, this is a, uh, oh, well, from Robin. So it's one, it's the, yeah, it's your, your microphone. microphone. I'm handy. Yeah. I'm still in training. Seabeds <laughs> um, is the first Wednesday in October, and it's the day annually where district enrollment is a snapshot, and that is your enrollment used for this by the CDE for the whole year. Gotcha. So that's your enrollment and your enrollment will go up or go down, but that's it. Now that's different than the ADA, right? So the average daily attendance is taken every day, every month and certified in three different quarters. And that's how we get our funding. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Another great question. I'm sorry. You're on a roll. Carry on. Come on. Carry on. Love it. Thank you, everybody. Yep. No more questions? We're good? Good. All right. Thank you. All right. Moving on to 10.4, the approval of the 2024-2025 district goals timeline. Yes, board. This is a standard thing that we look at every year, but it's um, the goals that we're talking about right now started with this process uh, last year at this time, right? And so I just wanted to put that calendar um, in front of you and ask for your approval. I think 
um, as we go through the year, it doesn't mean that things can't be adjusted if we need to add or change or, or mold the way that we set our goals and work together with our community. Um, but this is the starting point for it. So I'm happy to answer any questions for you. I move that we approve item 10.4, the district goals timeline. I'll second. All right. Uh, I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. Moving on to item number 10.5, approval of resolution 2023-17. Hello again. Um, this is a resolution required by the Office of Public School Construction, which is the California Department of Education. It's part of our modernization, and we go through a lot of certifications. And we had to do a new resolution because we have a new CBO. So the names had to be, um, so the superintendent and the CBO are certified to sign on those. And they said, oh, you need to do this new resolution. Okay. Any questions about that board? Not at all. I move that we approve item 10.5, resolution number 2023-17. Second. All right, I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Moving on to item number 10.6. It is that time of the year when all the legislative decisions that were made the previous year started to be turned into board policy and administrative regulation uh, regulation adjustments. And so um, these are here, they're not action items, they're a first reading for your information. Um, but they're there just uh, for your consideration. And as always, I wanna uh, acknowledge Nicole Clevin for doing such a great job of summarizing all the details of the new policy, it's really helpful but those 71 pages are there. And uh, <laughs> if there's any questions, we're happy to answer. Otherwise, they'll come back for action at the next meeting. Great. Any questions? Negative. All right. I get a motion. Oh, no motion. There's nothing. So we're moving on to item number 11. Um, board member comment, future agenda items. Team, anything? Can we put the um, Coast to Coast program yeah. Thank you. on the next agenda? Yep. It's on my birthday. It starts April 8th. Yay. And Dana, maybe we can have the, at some point, maybe not next meeting, but just a reminder about the school bus. Yes, I have program. that on there and we, we will come back with that. Thank you very yes. much. Just reminding you. Thank you. All right. Any others? Well, you know what that means. We move it on to item number 12, which is um, to let you all know that the next regular board meeting will be held September 13th, 2023 at uh, six o'clock, starting with closed session. And can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Good night, folks. 7.37. Thank <laughs> <laughs>